Well, hello. If any of you guys happen to make it to Kevin's speech earlier, you might have a bit of a leg up at the beginning here, because we're going to be doing some orienteering. And so, let's go on a hike. So, in order to go on a hike, we need to figure out where we want to go, right? And there's this mountain up here called Epaulet Mountain. And I think it's got a pretty view of Mount Bierstadt and Mount Evans, which are just to the northwest of this map. And it's got some really steep cliffs on the side that might be fun to kind of look over. So I think we should go to Epaulet Mountain. And in order to get to Epaulet Mountain, we have to know where we are. So that way we can figure out how to get there. So if you're a young scout, maybe in my troop, and you were trying to say where you were, you could do something like, Oh, I kind of remember walking over here, and I think we're right here. Good method, right? Very reliable. But a more reliable way is to use something called triangulation. And to do triangulation, you need a compass. And you take your compass, and you find the bearing to two large recognizable objects. So I think that over there is Rosalie Peak. And it's at 227 degrees. And that over there is Rosedale Peak. And it's at 95 degrees. And you can take your compass and put it on your map. So that way, the compass is north, is the map's south. And line it up with the correct bearing. And scoot the compass over a little bit and draw a line. And do it again from the other peak. Draw another line. And then right where those two lines cross is where we are. So now we know where we are. And we want to get to Epaulet Mountain. And to do that, we have to walk there. So we could just go straight there, but then we have to go down the mountain and then up an 800-foot cliff. And that sounds pretty hard. So I think a better method would be to head a little bit up Rosalie Peak and then turn and go along that ridge. And then we have a straight, straight shot across to Epaulet Mountain. Get all that? Now, I can imagine that you're all wondering what this could possibly have to do with wisdom or government, since that's what this capstone is supposed to be about. Well, wisdom is a tricky thing. There are many ways to define it, and one definition that I like, and it's nice and simple, is that wisdom is good judgment. But that doesn't really say a whole lot about it, and it doesn't really say how to have wisdom. So to expand on that, I would say that central to wisdom is asking the question, why? Why, you might ask. Well, why is also a tricky thing. So we're on our hike, and we're sitting down and eating lunch, and a ranger comes up to us and says, why are you guys here? And we say, well, we parked a little bit to the southwest of our map, and we walked along this trail down here, and we came to a fork in the road, and we decided to go to the right. We went to the right, came across Deer Creek, and we went to cross Deer Creek. But the bridge had collapsed. So we had to go upstream about half a mile until we could find a nice place to cross. And we walked through the stream and got our feet wet. And then we had a lot of fun crashing through the bushes and climbing over rocks and under trees while we tried to find our way back to the trail. And the ranger says, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I mean. Why are you here? And we say, oh, well, we're trying to get to Epaulet Mountain. We want to see the view. We want to see the cliffs. And it'll be fun to get there. Asking why can question either of two things. It can either be questioning why looking backwards or why looking forwards. And we can refer to this why looking backwards as why where from. And we can refer to the why looking forwards as why where to. Wisdom requires that you ask both. When the Founding Fathers were trying to convince the American people that they wanted the Constitution, they wrote into their introduction of the Federalist Papers that every argument that they would make in this series of arguments would be meant to convince you of the need for the Constitution based solely on your reason. And in some of these essays, they wrote about the dangers of domestic faction. And one of the principal dangers of domestic faction is that it encourages people to act solely based on passion or emotion and without rational thought. 
Passion can drive people to do things that they honestly do not agree with, but are just swept up in the feelings of a need to in the moment. This is like, as a young scout, when we just decided where we are in the map, because it felt right. We kind of remembered some of the stuff around it. And it's not reliable. It's not a good way of figuring out where you are. A more reliable way is to use objective reality, which is what we used when we were triangulating. This is the answer to the why, where from question, and is the gathering knowledge step of wisdom. Now, in order to have perfect wisdom like God, we would need to have perfect knowledge, and obviously this is impossible. And this is one of the places where we need God to help us, so that way we can do the next step well without this perfect knowledge. The next step is the make judgment part. And this is where we ask the question, why, where to? If we don't know what peak we're heading towards, how can we know how to make decisions to guide us there? But even if we do know our peak, we don't just hike straight there, otherwise we hit obstacles like 800 feet cliffs. And instead, we have to form short intermediate goals. And here, the knowledge we gather in the first step is crucial. Each time we reach one of these intermediate goals, we ask the wise question again. And as we do this, we reorient. And this reorientation can look as simple as continuing in the same direction, or it could be changing our course and heading off somewhere new. We can use this question, why, where to, to guide our decisions, whether they're in line with their purpose or not, and whether their purpose is good. Here's another place we need God to guide us as we seek wisdom. We need God to guide us as we set the purposes that we're heading towards. Important to note here is the need to be able to clearly articulate all of this, articulate why we're here, why we're from, and why we're to. We can't just know or feel the answers to these things. The articulation itself is important. The articulation is our defense against being driven solely by passion because it forces you to reason out your thoughts. Passion can be used to get us to act, but we need reason to understand why we act and to make good decisions. I would say, asking this question, why are we here? Why, where from, and why, where to, is the defining characteristic of wisdom, and it's a good method of acting wisely. In 1776, America declares independence from the British Empire and goes to war with, at the time, the world's most powerful nation. Why would they do this? Well, there were all these horrible things happening. Excess taxes, deprivation of trial by jury, their trade was being cut off from them. The founders of America wrote a whole list of grievances in the Declaration of Independence. America was in an uncomfortable place and under growing tyranny. But that's just the where from answer. So what's the where to answer? Well, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary to dissolve the political bands which have connected one people to another because they are endowed with certain inalienable rights, among these being life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Do these phrases sound familiar? They're direct quotes from the Declaration of Independence. America's where from answer was to escape tyranny, and America's where to answer was to institute a new government that could secure these rights for themselves and for their posterity. The founders had thought through these questions. They structured their Declaration of Independence with a section about why, where from, and a section about why, where to. And it doesn't stop there. As America was fighting for its independence, it was in all practicality ruling itself. And in, so why did America write the Articles of Confederation? Well, America needed a government in order to be able to rule itself. But that's just the where from answer. <clears throat> What's the where to answer? Well, America wanted to get closer to their goal. The goal of America and the founders of America was to protect the freedom, happiness, and safety of the American people. And the Articles of Confederation were the first steps in that direction. The Articles of Confederation were active from 1781 to 1788. 
But in 1787, as America was floundering and about to drown, the founders decided they needed to fix something. They went through this wise process again. They asked, why are we here? Where from? And why are we here? Where to? And they reoriented themselves towards their goal. And they took another step closer, creating the Constitution. And to enable future steps closer, they wrote the process of amending the Constitution. Now, in order to accomplish any of this, America needed to come together as a team with a common foundation. If they hadn't come together as the colonies, they almost surely would not have won the Revolutionary War and almost surely never gotten their independence. If they hadn't come together during the Constitutional Convention, we almost surely would not have had, would not have such a revolutionary form of government with such real foresight and safeguards against tyranny. If they hadn't come together under the Constitution, almost surely the Union would have splintered. If at any point in this process, America hadn't come together and they'd lost sight of their foundational goals and their foundational foundation, <laughs> almost surely we would not be here today in the way that we are. One of my ideas this year was to help to rework what student leadership in our school looks like. And obviously that hasn't happened, but the lack of progress illustrates another component of being wise. I had thought through these questions. What is the purpose of student government? Why, where to? And what does student government look like in our school right now? Why, where from? And I'd received validation and encouragement from my dad and Mr. Cooper and Mr. Spector. But no next step ever felt right, and hence nothing was ever done. The missing piece here was the team aspect. We never sat down as a team and asked about these wise questions, whether that team was SLC or the student body or the Front Range community as a whole. In order for progress to have been made, we needed to have agreed upon a common current state of things why are we here, where from, and a common goal, why are we here, where to. Ultimately, we would have had to debate and discuss and decide on the next step together. And this is a good place for debate and discussion. But without this foundational, with, without this foundation of why are we here, no progress can be made. This is especially evident in America today Thinking objectively about why we do something, either why, where from, or why, where to, is pretty much unheard of. We have two domestic factions that are mostly driven by passion, essentially the Republicans and the Democrats, and they're inherently divided. Because the question has never been asked, they have two different feelings for where from, and two different inclinations for where to. There are two camps, and they're pulling from different spots in different directions. And this can only end in a violent rip down the middle and two separate peoples. We created a republic, a good one, I'd say. But we're on the edge of losing the united part of the United States. So what can we do to keep our republic? Well, it's not that we need to end debate. And it's not that we need to force unity upon America. But we just need to ask the question, why? Why, you might ask. <laughs> well, asking why will create a common ground that will let us work together. I think that it's very likely that most Americans, or all Americans, will agree on the answers to these two wise questions. Why are we here, where from, and why are we here, where to? Finding this common start point and end point allows us to have real conversations about the next steps we should take. It eliminates the bitter pulling that will only end with ripping the fabric of America and replaces it with two elmsmen pushing the rudder of a ship against each other to direct the ship's path. Yes, there will still be competition, but rather than ripping us apart, this competition will be good and push us in a better direction. A difference in perspective within the team allows the team altogether to have better judgment. 
But this can only work if the team has a common foundation in the question, why? Why, where from, and why, where to? And who will be the one to introduce this new way of thinking? Well, it starts with each of us individually. If in everything we do, in every area of our life, we ask these wise questions, why are we here, where from, and why are we, where to? And we go through life finding a waypoint, making a waypoint, and then reaching it, and re-asking these questions. Then a way of thinking with wisdom will work its way into our political conversation and help to steer America back towards its goal of freedom, happiness, and safety. You, individually, by starting to ask these wise questions of yourself, can bring reason and wisdom back into America. America has a republic, and if we each act wisely, we can keep it. It starts with you.